Hi, hi, this is Everett. Simply, simply drawing with Everett. So, uh, good evening. Uh, I just came off uh, live this afternoon at uh, uh, two o'clock. I was uh, watercolor, watercolor art, uh, Everett's watercolors at two o'clock. So, if you're interested in watercolors sometime, come over and uh, check out my program. Uh, the announcement will be on uh, uh, LinkedIn. Uh, it'll be on uh, YouTube and on Facebook. So, uh, and the ch my chat room is open today, and I'm in the studio today with my wife, Gloria. Hi, everyone. And uh, she'll be monitoring the broadcast and also the, the chat room. Uh, the chat room is there. Uh, you can make a comment uh, during the broadcast. Uh, leave a question or comments about what you see and what you like. And uh, give me a thumbs up. And uh, also subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, to my Facebook. And uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can if you have questions. Uh, the short programs I have here, these are, I've always been interested in art, uh, especially since watercolor, and I do a lot of drawings because drawing is the, the basis of uh, art concepts uh, to get the shapes and so forth collected. Uh, in my new studio here, I've, uh, I've got paintings all the way around me that I've been painting over the years, and you can see some paintings behind me now, watercolor paintings. Uh, and up here to my right is something new. This is, gonna, this is a drawing board, and uh, during the presentation here for uh, drawing with me, along with me, uh, I'll be doing some things here on the board uh, just to show some demonstrations. And I, I, got some, uh, I got some suggestions here along the way that during the broadcast, uh, you should try to follow along with me uh, or do, do what I'm doing. This is what the example is. I'll give you an example and, and practice it. And then next time uh, you have a chance to let me know how it went. Uh, but I also got some examples over here. Uh, drawing a person's head, that's really a, a good thing to start with. Uh, even a self-portrait, just start drawing something. We're going to go over that in the future, and then maybe you can learn from doing something now. Maybe you can learn some questions about what you can learn. Uh, also, do a, do a, you can do a, just do a drawing of a person without any kind of reference at all. Just draw a person. I like to see those that do it. We'll go over to that also. And uh, so doing things ahead of time uh, will be important. Uh, if you put your uh, art together and you want to uh, pass it on or share it, uh, I have a Facebook page uh, called uh, Everest Workers Art Group, and uh, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, also, you can draw your hand. I did that last week, but you can draw your hand from any position. That's another good, a good subject matter. And uh, last but not least, just draw a chair. Uh, a chair that you uh, use every day, or I wouldn't say an easy chair. I'm talking about a regular uh, wooden chair with four legs and, and some, some shapes to it and so forth. Those are examples of things I'll be going over in the future, and those are things that if you try them now, uh, and I'll go over those, I'll, I'll review these again. These are just something that has in my mind I want to discuss tonight. Uh, let me go, I'm going to move red camera, and let me show you my website. Uh, this is my website, everestwatercolors.com. And on there, I have art supplies, and I have a, my, my classroom videos from the my art from my work hour classes. And I also have a link to Simply Drawing with Everett. What I do is, after the broadcast, I put that link, I put that uh, video on this, on, on my website, on supply, uh, so Simply Drawing with Everett. And this QR code here, if you take your camera from your cell phone and point it here, it will take you directly to my website. This, this uh, QR code right here. <clears throat> and also, <clears throat> I mentioned our Everest Work Hours Art Group on Facebook. This is the QR code for that Facebook page. And that's where you can download your art or your drawing. And that way uh, I can communicate with you and uh, we can correspond uh, through Facebook on this particular page. So my website and my web page here on, or my Facebook page here on, on my art group. Those two things might be interesting to you. Okay, and also, uh, uh, this is episode number three. And uh, we've had two episodes already, which are already in the book and uh, also on, the, on my website. Uh, but what I, what I suggest you do, and I'll just start one myself. After each, ses after each session, after you've had a chance to practice or whatever, you know, keep, keep a... Keep a, a, a notebook. I have a loose leaf notebook here that I keep my notes in, and here's my samples of everything that I've done. So what I suggest is you keep samples and, and a, a record 
of the things you've drawn. I think it's very important. Or if you have a sketchbook, uh, this is a sketch pad which I have, which I use in my art. But this sketchbook uh, is something also you can do your drawings on here and keep them as a permanent record. So there are a couple ideas to do when when you do a drawing or something. Have a place to keep them for you for your reference to look back on later, and uh, and also we can talk about as far as improvement. I would like to take something you do today, and uh, a couple weeks from now or a little bit later, do a, do something similar and then make some comparison about and show some improvement over what you've done. So that's the purpose of this uh, little get together on uh, Thursday evening, is to uh, go over to, go over something and then have an opportunity to uh, improve improve your improve your drawing. Now let me take you to uh, the close up camera. Uh, the material you need to do for tonight is a, you need a, a set of pencils. I have a, an HB pencil, I have a 2B pencil, and a 4B pencil. The HB is a standard pencil, standard number 2. The, the uh, 2B and HB are softer lead. And then I have a, I have a, a blending stump here that I use for shading. And I have a, a synthetic eraser, which is a good eraser for erasing your, your lines and so forth. And tonight I'm going to use the, uh, the Sharpie... Uh, uh, fine point. I'll do. I'm going to use that tonight so you can see what I'm drawing. Uh, the pencil's a little light, so I'm going to use the sharpie tonight. Uh, a couple of things I want to do to get started with is uh, let me put my let me put these drawings aside here. Okay. I'm going. Let me take you to the overhead camera. Okay. We're going to operate from this camera here, and I'll bring it up close if we need to take a look at it. Okay. Let's. Uh, First of all, I like to do. Let me let me take you back to the main camera. Uh, the first thing you do before you start drawing is to is to relax. Uh, this is a calm down. Uh, you calm down, relax, loosen up, uh, loosen up your fingers and your wrists and so forth, and uh, your, even your shoulder muscles. You know, you'll be drawing with <laughs> more than just your hand. You should be drawing with your. You should be drawing from your wrist, uh, your elbow, and your shoulder. You should use your whole arm movement when you draw. Not just your, not just your fingertips, okay? Uh, and clear your mind. And when you clear your mind, what I do is I close my eyes. I take a couple of deep breaths, a couple of deep breaths slowly, and kind of clear the mind, okay? Now you're ready to draw. So let's take a few. Uh, uh, I mentioned I mentioned a book last week on the on the drawing from the right side of the brain, okay? And that, that's a scientific thing for explaining where, where the, uh, what part of your brain you use for drawing and so forth. But basically what I like to talk about is we're trying to train the artistic part of your brain. Everybody, we use the logical side all the time. We, we compare sizes, we look at things, and we, we name things. And that's what the analytical side does. But the artistic side concentrates on the shapes and it, it concentrates on the values, whether it's light or dark. It, it concentrates on the edges and, and things like that. And that's the things that we want to try to improve on. And usually that's taken over by your, the other part of your thinking, which is talking about how, uh, what, the, what the thing is and how good it is and so forth. And we're not going to go into that. So let's do a little warm-up. I mentioned this last week in my last class. Uh, I'm going to take the HB pencil. And... Uh, we're going, to, we're going to just repeat the le uh, numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now what I do, um, let's see. The best way to do that is, uh, okay. All right, best way to do that is I turn the overhead camera on. <laughs> okay, so you can put the pencil, put your, I'll put the pencil up here about the top of the, now you need a, a piece of paper. You'll need two pieces of paper tonight, one for extra warm up and one we're going to do a drawing on. Okay, so uh, up here at the top, we'll start at the top of the page up here, uh, and start with the letter one, you know, up, down, up, up, down, up, and then go to the number two, one, and then go back, one, and then go back, and then the number three, once, and then back, three, and then back, and then number four, and then back. And then number five. Okay. Now, <clears throat> by doing that, by repeating those numbers, uh, and just 
number one, in your mind, you're thinking about those numbers and the shape they are, and then your hand is making the motion. And you can look off to the side. Don't, don't follow your finger. Don't follow your hands right now. Look off to the side somewhere and, do the, and try that again. One, two, and then back, and then three, and then back, and then four, and then back, and then five, and then back. When I do the letter one, I'm going one, two, three. Then when I do the letter two, I'm doing this. When I do the letter three, I'm doing this. When I do four, I'm doing this. When I do five, I'm doing that. So I'm doing it over and over and over again. But I'm not looking at the numbers. I'm just following my mind and I'm feeling the num I'm, I'm doing two things. I'm doing the number, but I'm feeling the direction. I'm feeling contact with the paper with a pencil. So it, it's a sensation of thinking about what you're doing, moving your hand, but then feel the touch of the paper with the pencil, feeling the touch of that movement and that direction. Okay, those are some, some basic things to think about. Okay, now tonight we're going to talk about upside down drawing. Upside down drawing. So what the first the first thing I want you to do let's let's just start with you can use some handwriting and let's let's start out with handwriting. So I'm going to write my my uh, my program here simply drawing. I'm going to go, I'm going to write the simply drawing. Okay, I'm going to bring it, bring it up close to now. Now, I, I tried to I tried to uh, draw I tried to uh, uh, write write it very carefully and neatly as neatly as I can in my own handwriting, which is a unique mark. And your your handwriting is a unique mark. Now we're going to turn upside down. Now I want you to draw that shape. Up back upside down this way. Uh, you can watch me when I do it. There's a, there's an eye in there. Now this this letter this part this shape here uh, do do it whichever way I want it. This is a shape, so I follow the curves. Okay. Now the lesson over here. I'm gonna I'm just just gonna follow the shapes. I go up and down. This is turn the curving up. It does another loop. I'm looping up. Now that's what the right side of what the left side the artistic side look. It looks like, it looks at shapes. It looks at relationships. It looks at sizes. It doesn't care what it is. It just sees it sees those shapes. And this last this last figure here, it, go, it loops around. It comes up and it goes back down. Okay. Now let's let's turn that around. And then take a look take a look at the results. Okay. It's not exact exactly the same. But the shapes came out there simply, and there's drawing. Okay, and I did that upside down. Okay, now you can do the same thing. Now you, can, you can write your name, write your signature, turn upside down, and so forth. What this does, again, this is another way to train the artistic side of your brain to draw shapes. The artistic side, okay? So let's let's take a more let's take a more complicated uh, let's take a more complicated. I'm going, I'm going to my close-up camera. Oh, I'm going to stay on the same camera. I'm going to take a more complicated shape. Okay, that's a picture of uh, Adam. Okay, don't know what I don't care what it is. It's a it's a more complicated shape. And I'm going to take a piece of paper. Put it on my put it on my board, right below it. Now, I could draw with the HB pencil, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to because 
because it's going to be hard to see my pencil movement, I'm going to use a Sharpie. Fine point Sharpie, so you can see my marks, okay? So what you do when you turn it, now you can use a, you can use a, a drawing, you can use a photograph, a picture, whatever. But the point here is, turn it upside down. Don't look at it, just turn it upside down and draw what you see. Now, let's start here. I'm going to use my left hand, my finger, I'm going to point to where I am. And it's, it's not, nothing wrong with me looking at it, but I'm going to draw what I see, okay? So, and I'm going to start, I'll talk about it also. This is what, my, this is what I'm going to be talking about. Okay, I see this, I see this figure here, and I, I'm going to start the point here. I'm going, to, I'm going to draw on the paper, and I see it's a curve that goes down to, to my lower right, and it curves around, and then it comes back up. And makes another small loop. Okay, and also now from there, I can stop, I can pause at that point. Okay, and I continue on now. And then it curves again back. And I see it's almost parallel to that first line I made, but not quite. Almost parallel. All right, I'll go that far. Now let's let's draw let's, let's draw another shape now. <clears throat> let's start from here. I'm gonna loop around, I'm gonna follow. Now I'm going to follow this, this curve here. So this loops up, makes a big, big arc. It loops around. Now also notice when this comes around, it's going to, it's going to meet this line down here. So that's a relationship. It's going to meet. It's got to be close to that line there. I'm going to come around about right there. Then I stop. Okay. Now. Uh, I made one. I made one. I made one error already. But let's let's move on. Okay. Uh, let's let's work on this shape. Let's see this shape here. I'm going to continue on around. Now I started here, so I'll go this way. It curves up and stops. Okay. Then it, oh, I, I'm okay. I'm good. I'm good there. Now I'm going to work on the inside loop here. So it intersects here and goes on around and loops around. Now I'm talking to it. It loops around. It has a smaller circle than the other one. And it's got also a relationship here. It's got to meet this line here. So it comes around and it meets this line here. Okay. I don't know what it is, but I just drew that figure. Okay. Now let's draw another line. Let's draw this line here. It starts, starts about right here. And it curves up to the right and then it goes and it intersects with that first point I made right there. I drew that in. Okay, let's let's draw it up here to the top of this this motion right here. All right. It starts here. It's about where it's located, about right there. So locate the I locate the uh, I locate the ink pen. It comes around. Starts to arc up. I can pause right there, take a look. And now it continues down. It changes angle a little bit comes down and now it changes angle again it's not a straight line though it comes down as it curves in slightly and then it curves out and that goes down about as far I'm looking relationally now about as far as there then it starts to curve it starts to curve uh, in toward this this direction and I'm looking at sizes now and then this curves again right there now let's get that bottom line in it start it was at the bottom here it's a uh, it curves out comes around to the left my left comes up and it comes down pretty close to this mark and it comes over here to this mark over here okay all right now let's try let's just get this line over here about uh, halfway up this line starts and it goes in and it's about uh, it goes down almost to that mark there and I can start to curve. It curves around and it comes up about half about just before that mark so it'll come there and then it'll go and it curves back down. Okay. Now I can bring that mark around. Let's see, I can go either way. Let's let's go this way. Uh, I'll pick up this. I'll pick up the side here. It goes around. 
Now it curves down and it makes it makes a, a contact with this point down here. Okay, and the one last line I see here, that this is about uh, equal to this side over here. So I'm, I'm looking at relationships wise, and then it, it curves and meets this final shape over here. Okay, now a few little details here. Uh, these little dotted lines, they're just they're just reference points to make a shape for, for making shading. But well, we can make make those marks in there. This one here that comes down, it goes down about uh, to this point here, has a small curve to it. Then it comes up, and then this comes around here. So I'm kind of just following the line, and also it's parallel to that side over there. Okay, then I've got this shape down here. Uh, then there's this little shape over here, this little shape here. These are dotted lines, they're going to be shaded, be, they show where the shading is. Okay, they show shading. And then this line over here. So I'm kind of sketching them in, but I'm using a, I'm using a Sharpie. I'm using a sharpie. This comes over here, and then this this one here is a little, just a little jag over on the side. Okay, there's a little mark over here, simple. There, and down here, uh, this little this this little uh, line here is a line there, and then there's two two loops. There's a loop that goes here, and there's a loop that goes over here. Two loops. And I can shade those in. They're in dark, so I'll shade them. I'll shade them in, just the way the just the way the drawing is. Okay. Now this shape over here. Okay. Uh, it's about halfway, so it's right here. Okay. Uh, let me finish this off, and we'll talk about it some more. Okay. All right. And there are two lines here, which are kind of uh, arbitrary, but I'm going to stick them in there anyway. There's a line over here. And there's a line, a line down here. Okay, now uh, the reason we're doing this is this, this, this like we wrote the numbers for warm up, and we're trying to get the, the artistic part of the brain concentrating. This is what this exercise here is an exercise, and by turning the picture upside down, you are not identifying the parts. You are only identifying. The shape, you're identifying the mark, whether it curves, whether it's straight or around. So by identifying just the shape, you're not talking about what it is or how it is or whatever, because then you become too critical. Okay, now let me take my, let me take my uh, soft lead pencil, which is a 4B, and I can shade this in. Now when I shade in, I showed this last time, but when I shade in, I use the side of the pencil, the side of the lead. It gives you a, a much smoother, and it covers it covers the area a lot faster. So this is going to be like shading. So when I shade something in, I use the uh, broad side of the of the lead. It gives a smoother mark. And now I can finish this off down here too. This kind of comes around. Now I'm finishing this off over here. I'm just trying to I'm trying to finish off every time every drawing when you do a drawing whether it be a, 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 a part, let's say last last week we did a hand or whatever it is you you finish off the drawing with the outline and then add the details in and then finish it off with some shading give it so give it a little contour give it some contour. Or, or texture, or whatever, okay? Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is, uh, let's turn it around. Okay. Well, that's the, now, if my, uh, my uh, analytical part of my brain says, oh, well, that's a ram, and those are horns, and that's a face. And that's a mouth, and that's an eye. But that's not what I want you to think about when you draw. Don't think about the object. 
Don't think about the shape. Just draw the shape as you see it. When you turn around and look at your drawing, then you can see. Now, when I hesitated the first time, I said, oh, I made a mistake. When I stopped here, I thought I didn't allow enough room for this mark in here, but I, I was okay. When you can you can stop and pause. You can see the you can see the marks here I did on the with the uh, with a marker. Uh, I when I came to here I just paused. Then I drew then I drew the next line. I paused. Then I went down, picked this one up, went all the way around. I paused here and continued. So you can see where I stopped and started, which is okay on a drawing. You can you can draw a part of it and stop and then continue on. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so that's the purpose of this. This is strictly an exercise. This is you can take. Uh, I've taken, uh, for examples, I've taken pictures of, of uh, someone's face, a portrait, turned it upside down, and actually could draw a better. I could draw a better hand drawing upside down than I could the regular way, because you're only you're only looking at shapes. You're not looking at the object itself, and that's been proven over and over again. Okay, so just like drawing with your hand. Remember, we first thing we did. Uh, did I put it aside already? Or did I turn upside down? What did I do? Hmm. I'm sorry, I forgot what I did with my hand drawing. I, I wrote my hand. Oh, here it is on the first page. Okay, just like we did the, the handwriting. We did simply drawing, and we turn upside down, and we, we drew we drew it again just by looking at the looking at the shapes, just by looking at the shapes, and we did this one by turning the figure upside down, and draw the shapes. So, uh, this is just a, an exercise for you to train your uh, artistic side of your brain to draw the figure to draw the to draw the subject. To draw the subject. So if you're having if you're having a little problem with drawing, uh, this is one example. Just turn upside down and draw it from that angle. Take it's another perspective. And you'd be surprised how much more improvement you'll make on your drawings by just turning things upside down. So that's the whole purpose of today's little demonstration was to think about when you draw, turn your subject or your picture upside down. Then draw what you see. Don't don't name it. Don't don't try to figure out what it is. In fact, that's what's happening. Your brain doesn't recognize the shape because it's not it's not logical. It's not normal. When it's not normal or logical, then the artistic brain is going to take over and will draw. It, artistic brain likes the variety. It likes the change. It likes the different angles and shapes, and that's why this this particular position here you're much easier to draw than in the other position. Okay? All right. Well, look, I hope you're... Uh, enjoy this is episode number three, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, I have two episodes already in the can. <laughs> that means they're on my website. And my website is everettswatercolors.com, and on, right, you go, that, on my top page, you'll go up there to the upper left, uh, upper left of the website, and you'll see a little navigation box, and then you'll see, you'll see art supplies, blah blah blah, and then you'll see simply drawing with Everett, and there you hit that, and it'll take you to uh, the last video that we that I that I programmed, and then after tonight, this video will be on simply drawing with Everett on my website. Okay, now if you draw. If you draw something tonight, you can draw what we did here, you can draw the figure I did, or find something else and draw it upside down, then you can post it on Everest Watercolor Art Group on Facebook. And I just showed you here, you can go here to this particular QR code, and it'll take you right to that page, Everest Watercolor Art Group on Facebook. And I'd love to see you participate, and love to see you put some uh, uh, art there on that page, and make some comments. Okay. Well, that's uh, the end of today's uh, demonstration, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. We'll do something new.